Happy anniversary, Cynthia AI! In one year, this group will be in the, the first in the, in the state to, uh, to organize our community around the transformational opportunities presented by new technologies and specifically artificial intelligence. Uh, we are actually the largest AI meetup in the community in the entire state of Ohio and in the tri-state region. So and done and celebrated and collaborated and that's exactly you know what Helen and I were hoping for. Like, you better buckle up, seriously. Yeah, so much in store. So, I'm Kendra Ramirez, and you are at Cincy AI. This is our one year anniversary. And there are over a thousand of you in our community, and you know, every single month, you always are so, so supportive of all the work that's being built and done and celebrated and collaborated and that's exactly you know what Helen and I were hoping for and so today is just super super special and the fact that we get to celebrate it with you and we could not do this without our sponsors so you see and being able to host us here Dr. Kelly Cohen unfortunately he's at Cincy Startup Week um, so he couldn't be here and so, but being able to you know have them involved, having Seven Hills Technology, who's also in the room, Charlie and Brian, I haven't seen Brad yet, um, and their their support, and then Big Kitty Labs um, have all been super super helpful in making this possible. Um, this is very this is self funded, it's volunteer run. Um, thank you to our volunteers that we literally meet on Saturdays because that's the only day that works for all of us. Um, to plan and do all these excursions with you. And so thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our house. Thank you so much for you guys and all the work that you do as well. So thank you. Hey, Helen and Kendra, Kelly, everybody involved in AI for Humans, big congratulations on your one year anniversary. You're having a huge impact on our community. Uh, this is a true grassroots movement. I'm here in Boston. I wish I could be there, but I'm here with Chris Brock and others at the Generative AI World. But what you're doing is really important. You're putting Cincinnati on the map. You're bringing a human dimension to this critical AI world, which is continue, going to continue to become really big. I'm personally deeply grateful as a founder that I was able to announce my startup um, at one of your big events. That's to signify how important it is. But anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it going. Don't slow down. We need you. The movement must grow. Thank you. That's so sweet. So this community, for those of you that don't know, literally started on LinkedIn. This is a screenshot of, hey, I said, where are my AI fields in Greater Cincinnati? And well and hold over 13,000 impressions and almost 200 comments later. And that's where Helen and I met. A mutual friend of ours, um, Michael Lobin, was just like, hey, you two need to know each other. And then Helen and I had a chat. She was, do you need help? I'm like, yes, please. I need lots of help. And so I'm very, very grateful that she said yes and offered to do that and co-host this community with you. So um, it's just crazy that that all happened just because of a simple LinkedIn post. Saw. Like he literally took every month, and then Greg did this little awesome, you know, thank you recap as well. And again, we're going to share all of these things so you can see them. 
You also see, since the AI bingo in front of you, um, fill that out as you hear the words. Whoever gets bingo, we have books to give away. These travel far, far land of Cleveland. <laughs> the far, far land from Cleveland. And so uh, Helen and I went to Macon and it was awesome and they were giving out these books. You definitely want one, they're amazing. And then Chuck um, is so, so kind. Chuck, raise your hand. We've got the author in the room. Chuck donated um, some books for us as well, so thank you so much for doing that. So just play along uh, as we're going through, as you hear different terminology, check it off, or raise your hand, let us know when you hit a bingo and you win a book. So thank you for playing. And um, so just all the thank yous and all the love on LinkedIn, we so, so appreciate you know all the things that you guys are doing and sharing. So we want to know who's in the room, who's in the room. So where are my AI curious? Yay! Yay, yay, yay! I love it, I love it. Where are my AI users? Newsflash, that's all of us. Jody, hand up, hand up. That's all of us, yes. Yeah, and where are my builders? Builders, good, good, good. Builders, keep your hands up. These are your new best friends. Make friends with them because they will help you navigate the AI world. We all need that AI buddy in our, in our world. So make sure and connect with them today. If you are new here and you haven't been with us before and this is a little overwhelming and we want to get you plugged in, please grab Helen and I. Let us know what you're trying to, to do or navigate and we'll connect you with some of the amazing members in our community. So we don't want you to just come in, kind of hang out. Like, Let us help you kind of navigate this. Um, we know it can be very, very overwhelming. So make sure to do that. Um, impact and value. So if you want to pull out your phones, it's really helpful to us to navigate um, and understand the impact and value that you are bringing, you know, in this community. And I say you because it is the collective, right? It's all of us moving AI forward in our community here in Cincinnati. Yep, so since the AI impact, value, yes. Found a business, referral, learn something new, solve a problem, referral partner, something else, interview, love it, gain a client, yes. I always love the something else. So like someone tell me what you guys are putting, like is you get it, are you getting a date? Like what what are you what are you doing? And the something else. Someone tell me when you're collecting something else. Helen and I want to know. <laughs> Good, learn something new. Awesome, awesome, thank you, thank you. It just really helps us kind of gauge, you know, what you're learning and your, your, your takeaways you know, from our, our community. So thanks for playing. All right, flow, if this is new to you, right? Um, flow, how does this operate? How do we do all the things? We're gonna do some quick bite rounds, um, sh real quick, less than three minutes, if you've got something to share of a tip, a tool, or you wanna ask a community a question. We solve problems in this room on a regular basis. So don't be shy. We do have a couple of demos too because back to community feedback. You said, I love when we get to see new cool things that are happening. So we have a couple of demos for you. And then we're gonna do Q&A and shout outs. And so any questions that you have, any shout outs that you wanna shout someone out in the community, like, and this is, you know, Jeff is the one that started all of this. And I love that, you know, he stepped up and started doing that. And I was like, Jeff, that's brilliant. We gotta include that. And then we're gonna do a group photo. And again, those are new. When we say group photo to the wall, we all get up and hurt cats. You're not, you're not gonna do the cat thing, right? You're gonna, because I know you wanna talk to each other. And there were plenty of time to talk to each other. We're gonna go to the wall for a group photo because we always love to capture these moments. And then making sure that we're stepping into that networking collaboration. And we do have a hard stop at 4.50 because there's another event literally right behind us. So you can still network and collaborate, we just have to move it to the lobby. Is that okay? Are we okay with that? Okay, good, good. Um, and then again, getting plugged in. Ask us if there's anything that you need in the whole AI community, whether it be in this room or with one of our, our members you know, across, um, across the community as well. All right, with that, I'm gonna hand it off to your amazing co-host, Helen Todd. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kendra. Um, so today we have surprises and prizes for you, so definitely uh, check out the bingo. Um, we are part of the AI ecosystem here in Cincinnati. I would say we get credit for helping drive the grassroots uh, responsible AI movement. We're so uh, excited to be here at the Digital Futures Building. This is part of the $100 million investment into the innovation district here.
here in Cincinnati. So we're at the heart of uh, innovation uh, here. And our organizing partner, who uh, can't be here today, uh, his uh, uh, son recently got married and he's uh, with family, is Dr. Kelly Cohen. He is one of the leading AI researchers here in Cincinnati and is a treasure not only for our community, uh, but for the world. And he is one of the biggest champions of responsible AI. Uh, and as soon as we get the audio, um, we will get a short hello um, from Kelly. Uh, and without his support and, uh, oh, so I'm jumping ahead. Uh, without his support, um, uh, we wouldn't, this community wouldn't be possible. Uh, he really is our organizing partner and champion for us. Um, and then also, we have a lot of people who aren't here today, uh, but are here with us in spirit because there's Startup Sensing Week. There's a, there's a panel right now. I'm actually supposed to be on it, but I'm here. John Salisbury took my place. Uh, um, uh, Carl Frake, uh, who heads up the Cincinnati AI Catalyst, is on the panel. Uh, so he's here. But we're so excited because we're all in the same ecosystem supporting each other, whether the community node, uh, which is Cincy AI, whether it's the Cincinnati AI Catalyst, uh, which is another volunteer consortium uh, dedicated to um, using AI to make sure all of the region's eight counties and 2.5 million residents do not get left behind uh, with AI. And then of course, uh, UC and all of our um, academic partners in the region. And uh, this is Carl, uh, who's the head of uh, the, CIA, or the Cincinnati AI Catalyst. Hey everybody. Uh, congratulations to the Cincy AI for Humans uh, community. Uh, obviously, Kendra and Helen, great job. Uh, first year, you guys have really rocked it. Um, with the Cincinnati AI Catalyst, it's so important for community to be core to what we're trying to do, the AI blueprint for the Cincinnati community. So I just wanted to say hi to everybody. We're recruiting. Uh, the next 12 months is going to be huge, so please keep being part of the effort. Please be uh, more and more of the community. Congratulations again. I hope you all have a great meeting. Okay, and then next, uh, we have Dr. Kelly Cohen uh, also sending us a message. Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, happy birthday, Helen and Kendra, for 12 months uh, of our since the AI for Humans meeting. Uh, I'm Kelly Cohen. I uh, uh, support uh, and work with Helen and Kendra uh, to make this, uh, make these meetings be uh, hosted here. Um, I've been celebrating these past few days. My son just got married and so I'm with family and that's why I cannot make it in person, but I'm there in spirit with all of you. And uh, what do I have to say? Go Cincy AI, okay? Let's go about making the world of AI more responsible. And uh, let's ensure that the Cincy AI ecosystem continues to be on the map. Please continue coming here and warmest and best wishes. Thank you, Kelly. And one of the exciting announcements today, we finally have a website! <laughs> so instead of our massive newsletter, this is version one, since the AI.org. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, love that it needs, but we have a new home. Uh, so, uh, uh, and anyone who wants to help us manage the website, you know, we're open to that too. Uh, but we're very excited, and this is a big shout out to one of our sponsors, uh, Big City Labs, uh, who uh, is working with us and made this website for us. Um, so we're very excited, and right now as we are transitioning over to the website, the newsletter is still one of the best places uh, to get all of your uh, Cincy AI news. And we have, I mentioned the ecosystem, we have a lot of events uh, happening at Startup Cincy Week. I hope you get down there for some of them, and I know you could be there and chose to be here, so we're very excited um, that you're with us today. Uh, Thursday, uh, Big Kitty Labs is hosting an AI meetup in Columbus. Uh, I'll be there speaking. Is Morgan here? I don't know if anyone from Big Kitty Labs is here. They usually come down. Uh, but uh, we uh, love their uh, uh, sponsorship and partnership. And then the 11th is the UC Data Science Symposium. Uh, Kelly is doing a presentation on explainable AI. 
uh, together digital, which Amy, you will hear from her uh, in a little bit, um, and a bunch of other events uh, that you guys can read in the newsletter. Uh, and then the WhipCon is, uh, that's a discount code, but you don't know how much, so uh, $20 off, so there you go. <laughs> and then I think uh, Don is here, do I see Don? Uh, Don, uh, we have another NKU Biz Access Hub uh, coming up on November 13th. For the beginners who don't know where to begin with AI, this Biz Hub is so great. You get Kendra and uh, Jennifer uh, and so many like people who uh, train as they're living uh, to uh, give their time and expertise uh, and hands-on like how to prompt and whatnot. Chris Brock, uh, who is part of the uh, AI group at Boston right now, uh, also uh, shows you how to create your own um, RAG, which is a secure uh, chatbot as well. So that's a great hands-on event for anyone who wants to go there. And then we've got the Hackathon, PMI Conference, and Ohio AI Summit. And if you have more, someone mentioned one, another event, uh, let us know and we'll put it in the newsletter on the website uh, in our upcoming meeting. Um, the next date, we're, we're kind of giving a, a lot of the announcements up front. Because <laughs> once we get into the quick bites, uh, we'll get, uh, you'll, you'll see the surprise. Um, so our next meeting uh, is Tuesday, November 5th. This is election day. Vote, vote early. Please be here. Then December 3rd. And I'm also super excited to announce um, that the Digital Futures Building has uh, agreed to sponsor us all of next year, and we have all of the 2025. <laughs> So this is only these slides now, but we'll get them out so you can mark your calendars. Uh, and if you want to, come to every meeting next year with us. Uh, and then some other events uh, uh, in our ecosystem as well. And Midwest Con, uh, you'll hear from Rob. I saw Rob uh, join the meeting in a little bit. Okay, our LinkedIn group. We also have a LinkedIn page now that you can tag. Okay, and now we're getting to the Quick Bites round. Uh, this is our core programming uh, for the newbies. I'd actually, uh, who's, who's meeting? Is this your first meeting? Yay! Oh my goodness! Welcome! What an exciting first meeting for you guys to be at. Thank you. And um, I don't know if I, this is our, our actual 13th, but uh, who was at the first meeting? Oh, we got a handful. Thank you guys for coming back. And I know uh, Deva, where is Deva? She is going to do every single meeting. So, <laughs> um, so we're all excited to have you here. So um, this is ask a question to the community, share an AI tip or tool, or share uh, what you're building. And uh, hopefully we'll have time for questions. Questions might go to just networking uh, today. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, oh, yeah, and here's, uh, before we jump in, a uh, few other little video surprises. Congratulations, Cincinnati, it's the AI for Humans event. Great job, Kendra, great job, Helen. So excited that you're at your one year. I'm here with Katie Trot Taylor of Heritage, representing Cincinnati. If you can't find Pete, he's here somewhere. Too. He gave an incredible keynote. It was my yes. It was so amazing to see how Grand Prix is accelerating on our product. What is your prompt? I saw so many people taking their phones out and pictures of the slides. Oh, we were. That prompted moment of truth. Yes. Now, the next one that's coming up, Katie's actually going to present um, in a lightning talk here in the next hour. I'll try to take some snapshots and take notes. We'll share that with everybody. We're so excited what Cincinnati's doing. We're trying to find what's going on in these other places on the coast, like Boston. How can we bring that back to our community and really empower uh, us? And then, yes, exactly. How do we bring Cincinnati and make sure that we're right there, too, so that we're, we're representing and we're doing the right thing in the AI movement? So. Yeah, so Chris Brock is the one that's going to do the demos on the custom GPTs, and Katie is the CEO of Narratize, which you'll hear more about uh, during our quick bites. It's a all-female founded AI company that's blowing up right here in Cincinnati that we're so excited to be here. And I feel like this is a good time to uh, pull up Pete's um, uh, uh, video on my messy uh, <laughs> uh, computer. Hey, Helen and Kendra. 
Kira, Kelly, everybody involved in AI for Humans, big congratulations on your one year anniversary. You're having a huge impact on our community. Uh, this is a true grassroots movement. I'm here in Boston. I wish I could be there, but I'm here with Chris Brock and others at the Generative AI World. But what you're doing is really important. You're putting Cincinnati on the map and bringing a human dimension to this critical AI world, which is continue, going to continue to become really big. I'm personally deeply grateful as a founder that I was able to announce my startup um, at one of your big events. That's to signify how important it is. But anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it going. Don't slow down. We need you. The movement must grow. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Um, and one thing, when uh, our community goes out to conferences, whether it's the MIT AI Summit or the Generative AI Summit, uh, we come back and share the learnings too. So, uh, you know, as we're representing and putting Cincinnati on the map here locally, and also representing whether it's Macon, Cleveland, South by Southwest, or these events. Uh, so when they come back uh, next month, we'll do a recap of their learnings too. Okay, and then one more video uh, of John, uh, who's another, uh, uh, Wonderful community member. Hey, Cincy AI Meetup. It's John Cavanaugh of the Plunk Foundation. Congratulations on one year. So excited to have been to most of the meetups themselves and can't wait to see you next month. Just wanted to share a general reminder that as we go through this incredible revolution with AI and all of these problems are being solved, we always need to look at how bad actors exploit these situations. And I'm your guy for that. If you ever want to chat or talk, you can reach me and we can have conversations from there. One thing I want to leave you with is that as these times roll around into the giving season, we spend time with family and friends. It's good to bring up conversations of how they are using AI and to identify some risks they may have. Some people may have downloaded um, AI chatbot apps that are um, flirty in nature or that take over um, lots of data. So while you can learn a lot of things from the people over you know, the holiday season, there are things to watch out for. Awesome, well, can't wait to see you next month. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so um, is Tracy here? I don't know if I... Oh, oh she's here. Right. I can watch her fight. So, Tracy, you can be Hi, I'm Tracy Ruber, Executive Director of the Circuit. I'm very excited to be back to announce the winner of our Proving Ground program, where we took submissions from the community at large for your AI use cases. The committee that evaluated this was so impressed that they picked not one, not two, but three use cases that we are developing at no charge to those organizations. So just a quick recap. One was to Rhein, um, Rheinstahl, I was gonna say the brewery, not the brewery, <laughs> the manufacturer, Rheinstahl, to take a lot of documents that they get in when they're manufacturing their parts pull out the pieces that they need in order to create the certificate of compliance that their customers need. So they'll be building out that solution. United Audit Systems, which does healthcare auditing, when you go to the doctor and they give you those little codes that get sent to insurance and if they're wrong, then you don't get coverage. Um, they audit that. They are going to be evaluating those codes to identify the cases where there is a high degree of mistake and error in order to improve the accuracy rate of those submissions and take out the manual labor associated with that. And then the last one is PL Marketing, which works with Kroger. They currently get approximately 65,000 photographs a month, which today are reviewed by people, and about 15% of them are inaccurate, unusable, and so they're going to be scanning those photos to delete them and then be able to pull out more important data to be able to drive accuracy and data back to their partners. So obviously it's going to take a little bit of time to build each of these out, but we will be publishing the use cases as they progress and we get the, the final results and studies. So we'll have more in a few months. So thank you all. Appreciate all the submissions. <laughs> So my 
my name is Amy Vaughn. I am the owner and chief empowerment officer of a national networking organization called Together Digital. Um, it supports female identifying folks who work in digital marketing, advertising, and technology. And next week, we are hosting our conference here in Cincinnati at Union Hall. Uh, so October 17th, mark your calendars. Allies, welcome to attend. Men, yes, you can attend. <laughs> but we are going to be featuring some stellar, stellar speakers, some that are in this room, aka Helen Todd's going to be speaking on AI and creativity and the future of those things and the innovation era, as she's calling it, which I love. We also have Katie Trout-Taylor that you saw earlier at Narratize. She's going to be doing a generative AI workshop for marketers. Um, they are coming out with um, a teams and uh, individual solutions outside of their enterprise. So if you want to get into it and check it out, great, great thing to do. Talking about data-driven personalization, purpose-driven marketing, Oh my gosh, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and how to have these conversations from a data standpoint. We've got a woman who's working on some AI solutions with the UN on how to identify and eradicate uh, sexist language on the internet, both in English and Spanish. So lots of AI representation, but also at the same time, just a lot of amazing female speakers and talent um, that are there to help inspire and inform you. So we do have a code as well. Um, so it's Cincy AI 25 if you want to save an extra 25% off of your ticket, but I'd love to see a look you there. Um, and if you can't make it, please just spread the word um, because it's going to be amazing. We've got, like I said, a whole host of workshops in Andrea too. I just saw you. She's also hosting an amazing workshop on how to take your information, your data to dollars. So again, really good tactical stuff, but really good, deep, meaningful connections and the opportunity to really spend time together. Um, this crew is a little bit different than what you're gonna, you're gonna get lots of warm fuzzies outside of just a lot of stuff to fill your brain. All right, hope to see you there. Thank you, ladies. And Rob, we're excited to come on down. In my presentation that I'm doing at uh, Together Digital, I'm so excited, it's called Farewell, the information age, welcome to the imagination age. Uh, so if you can make it, I'm very excited. I'm still working on it, but it's going to be great. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. And uh, Amy, by the way, definitely let me know. I wanted to make sure we spread the word. Um, and everybody, thank you. And Helen and um, Kendra, congratulations. Uh, one, you're one year old. Congratulations again. Uh, Rob Richardson, uh, CEO of Disruption Now, also Chief Curator of Midwest Con. Many of you were there. Uh, thank you for coming. I think overall attendance both online and in person and for the hackathon. Uh, we hit nearly a thousand in terms of inter interactions and in person was closer to about six or seven hundred. So it was our largest yet. So I, I just want to say thank you to all of you uh, for making that possible. Uh, one of our concepts that we are launching, we're, at, we're launching this with uh, uh, the UC uh, DAP Entrepreneurial uh, 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 Enterprise as well as 1819. Uh, we're working with them. They're launching a new studio uh, downtown, and part of what they want to do, and part of what we're working on with them, is using artificial intelligence in the creative field, right? Uh, so, what we call artistic intelligence, uh, the merger of uh, using the creative process, not not removing humans from it, but being a part of it, and then seeing AI as, a, as an extension thereof. You know, we have, uh, so as we think about it, uh, I believe that AI is a great tool, but it's never, we still need to input human empathy, human thought, human creativity. AI is creative to a point, but you still need that human compassion. You still need to be centered on um, human principles and values. Otherwise, you know, if you don't actually think about the purpose of what you're creating, if you create an algorithm and you don't understand its essential purpose, then you get surprised when it does things that you don't expect. So our goal is how do we how do we design with empathy, with intentionality? Uh, how do we think about using this not to replace creators, but to enhance creators to create a new type of art form? You know, I'm not sure if you all saw the story of what Lion Gate did, uh, but they decided to take and partner with Runway and train all of its old content without any of its creators in it. Right? I think that's the wrong way to go about it. They're so missing out opportunities to think about ways to use technology. Uh, in ways that can create new art forms. And I think it's short-sighted. And I think a lot of people, if we're honestly speaking, are thinking that way. We want them to think of not artificial intelligence, but artistic intelligence. So, as a part of Blink, uh, we're doing an activation that's going to continue throughout next year as well. We're going to do one that I'd love to talk to the group about at Women's History Month as well as Black History Month. 
using, working with artists and builders and others to create a new expression of, of AI with art, with the creative process being a part of it first. So you're going to see exhibits from uh, some Blink artists, you're going to see some uh, students from, from that, some faculty from that. Uh, we're going to have an immersive experience. We're going to have a VIP lounge, which is, you guys get in here, I'll give you guys the email. I'll make sure Helen and, and, and Kendra send it out. But it'll kick off on uh, October 18th. It'll be at, it was going to be at the studio that where the studio actually is going to launch on 24 Elder, but it's not going to be ready in time. So we're going to be, uh, the model group moved us to, I think it's 18, 1810, but I'll give you the right address, Elm Street. Uh, it'll be happening from October 18th to the 20th as a part of Blink. And so we'd love you to be a part of our initial experience. It is free, but it is limited because the space is limited, and we're going to have time to go from the 18th to the 20th with a kickoff kind of VIP session uh, that we will definitely invite you all to. Uh, we only have a limited amount of space because the space is, I think, eight or nine hundred square feet. But then there will be chances to go through the exhibit, learn, and we're going to have an interactive exhibit with the client box built in with AI and mouse and props. So that sounds interesting to you. We'd love to, we'd love to see you there. Uh, again, I'll just send out the email through via uh, uh, you know, the Cincy AI Meetup. We'll also post it online, so if you follow Ben Westcon, if you follow me on LinkedIn or anything else, we'll do that. Uh, I would love to see you there. I think it would be a great event, and I'm, I'm so looking forward to play. Thanks so much. This is amazing. I had no idea this group existed. It's my first time here, and I had a spinal tap moment where I could not figure out how to get out of the parking garage. <laughs> but I found the stage, and I'm going to plug in if that's okay. I have something to share with you guys. So, um, my name is Andrea Larson. I am COO and co owner of a marketing agency called UFO. And I know a lot of people in this room, um, and I'm excited to see you guys all together talking about AI. We have a team at my agency of growth marketers, which is a really big role. We ask our team of growth marketers, they're also hiring by the way, so if this sounds like you, keep your ears open. Um, we ask our growth marketers to be account managers, project managers, campaign optimizers, going into the actual ads, creating them, developing organic campaign strategies for our clients. Um, and then we ask them to report and get deep into data. So we're asking our team a lot. And one of the things that we've done with AI is helped them to do their job more efficiently and more quickly and more smartly. Is that a thing? Smarter? <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you guys some of the tools that we worked on developing for our team of growth marketers that they are using for actual product, product and client work. I'll get this one in. old music. Um, and, and one of the things that we started to think about was, okay, what can AI help with the most? Definitely structured data. Ah, there we go. There's our website in case you want to check us out. Uh, we work with a lot of Cincinnati clients. I'm from Columbus, by the way, so I'm kind of all around Ohio. But um, one of the things we started from was, you know, where, where can we really help? Where can AI come in and help? So to Rob's point, you know, you still need that human touch with the content we create. We as humans are, create, are craving that human touch always. Um, so thinking about that, who here deals with a lot of data? Does this kind of spreadsheet look familiar to you? What about e-commerce data? So this is a list of products for one of our clients that we have essentially gone through and found their top products, gone through them one by one, optimized product titles. Who here thinks that sounds like a fun task? <laughs> Nobody actually wants to do that, right? So AI can come in and help for those top priorities. Oh, it's working now. This is magic. So we have written scripts that now are going to these product pages, looking at their existing titles, visiting the website, coming up with an optimized product title that will work well for organic search, that will work well in shopping campaigns, It'll work well for Google search. So here are the different versions. And you can see, as one of the examples here, this product was called a Wall Street Series Modular Armchair. What is that? What do people really care about? So we have trained our AI working behind the curtain to figure out what the important features of that product are. And you can see that title that it came up with is pretty good. It's a pretty good start point. So our growth marketers can now go grab a cup of coffee. Maybe I'd rather them work on something else while this is running, but they'll probably go get some coffee, take a walk. They can come back and then they can go through this list one by one and be more efficient, be smarter, work faster. 
that's one of the things we're doing with AI, is starting to not just use chat GPT copying and pasting, but building it into our existing workflows. This is something our client can use. They want it in this format, and we've written it so that it will create this. This is another example, keyword research. Woo, fun, right? Not at all. So, but it's a necessary part of the process, right? So figuring out what the keywords are. Um, there's a movie coming out for Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, we're working with uh, Paramount Shop to help optimize their products that they're selling for that movie. So one of the things, one of the example you'll see here, you start with a seed word. I'm gonna change it on the fly. Let's do Beetlejuice shirt. And instead of having our growth marketers go to our tool that will show you the search volume, this will now automatically pull in the search volume for all of these, all of the seed keywords, there it goes. Now we have all the top search volume. We have a comma separated list here that they can export and use to create content. And you can actually like, you're like, ah, eh, I don't care about these keywords. There was a problem, that's right. Well, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to update the comma separated list for you there. So they're working faster. Another big question, I'm gonna try to go really quick. I have a couple more things to share though, is how is Google viewing AI content? Do we know? Does anybody feel like they have a really good answer for that? I don't even think Google has a great answer for that right now. So can Google tell if content is AI generated? Does Google care? We get that question all the time. Our clients are asking us, how do we make our website ready for search GPT? So our method at UFO is to test. So we're testing the ideas constantly. We own this website called Sell More Blast. It was a project we did way back in the day where we were testing ideas for auto blast industry. We had a client in that sector. We wanted to see what would happen if we tried to test SEO content. Well, we just used a tool in WordPress, and these are available for you to, to try today if you want to do an experiment yourself. We generated almost a thousand pieces of content that is, are actually pretty high quality. We didn't write any of these, but they also they have, if you go into one of them, they have internal links, they link to each other. They have external links that'll link to sources. It's pretty good content, they have charts apparently. So we are testing this now in real time to say, okay Google, what do you think of this website? We already ranked pretty well. What happens if we had a thousand pieces of content? What's gonna happen with that? So if you wanna follow along, I should be able to tell you in a couple months kind of the result of that. Um, I think that most of these people are actually here. I see some are sitting right there. Amy's not there. I, yeah, I didn't know this group existed, so I kind of just walked into this room and added myself to your agenda. Thank you very much. Um, but I have an event coming up that we're hosting with my company. It's an OTR at a really cool venue called Summer House. Amy's going to be speaking. Summer's going to be speaking. If you guys don't know Matthew Dooley, he's amazing as well. We'd love to see all of you guys there. Um, really appreciate uh, this community a lot. But we'll be talking about AI. We'll be talking about all of the smart things that these cool people have to say. You'll learn trends and insights, things that they're hearing in their different industries. And this is me, AI Andrea. Please feel free to reach out to me if you want to talk more. But if you guys haven't used the headshot tool, Aragon, it's pretty cool. Um, you can tell me if you think that looks like me, but it's pretty close. So thank you. Thank you. I love demos because it really takes the concepts and like lets everyone show uh, what they are. Um, Yanu, are you here? Uh, uh, yes, come on up, and uh, we're gonna. We have a few more demos, uh, and then uh, Summer, we actually have a slide for you uh, after the demos <laughs> for the recap. Hello, hi everyone. My yeah. name is Nianu, and I'm here to demo uh, our new application. This application is really, really amazing because it bridges the gap, or it helps to solve the problem of bridging the gap between the current. Uh, AI talents that we have and where we should really, really be thinking. So this is an AI-powered platform that helps you get work done. How does it work? So typically you visit, you visit Upwork and you try to hire talent and then what happens? They come back or they don't respond or they spend four or five days trying to get back to you. You get exhausted, you move to the next person, right? And so what this tool does is it's an AI pod platform for AI developers, but it also gives the AI developers a console where they can get their AI work done. And so we have all of the sandbox tools that help them to sort of be able to accomplish their work. So let's walk through the platform real quick. So we jump on here. 
you, you could create a project. If it's a web application, you could enter the name of the web application. I'm not going to go into the details of that because I don't want to spend, take too much of your time. I want to spend like five minutes doing this. So you could enter your you know, the project title and then you could create a description of what the project is about, right? And then what you would get is a detailed, a detailed AI project description, scope, and requirements, everything. You know, and so you hit the submit button, so let's do that. And then now it starts to ask you questions like, you want to choose your preferred front-end program, uh, programming language? What do you guys want to go for next year? Any ideas? Any developers in the house? <laughs> <laughs> what? Did someone say something? Okay, so I'll go with next year's, right? So next year's. Do you have your existing design files for your UI UX design? You can say, well, yes, I do. How about your back end? Django, is it a, uh, what of your database? Is it the Postgres? Okay, well. How about your cloud provider? Is it AWS? Is it Google provider? I'll go with AWS. And then you can start to add your project roles. And you could have AI do the uh, recommendation for you. But like for the five customers that we have currently right now testing this, we make it easy for them to just enter the information. So I could say, well, on a front end, let me drop this. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. OK. So front end developer, you could select their categories, and you could see the drop down, select what you want them to do. And then boom, you add your uh, so you could literally create your project team and then you hit the next button. And what happens is now you're able to view your project right here. And so you can go to view your details. AI would now manage the status. AI would gather the code that the developer uses on a daily basis. AI sequences the different tasks that need to be completed by the week. You see the timelines. AI does all of that scheduling for you. So you can actually manage your uh, freelancers workflow timeline and make sure that they actually get the work done. You can check your deliverables, you know, uh, activities, files, approvals, things of that nature. You can interact with the uh, developer and things of that nature. We also have our platform country that allows them to be able to sort of use the sandbox tools for natural language processing and generative AI so you don't have to waste as much time trying to get work done because we have that at the time for you. Any questions? That's awesome. Well done. <laughs>
And that was really the idea of how do you tell these effective stories? Oh, how do you tell these effective stories? Sorry. <clears throat> and so we're all around prompting you with the right questions to get your ideas and, and share your insights and seamlessly create the artifacts that you need. So narratize the way it works today. Uh, See, you choose what you want to create. So we actually prompt you with some different templates and things you can write. So innovators in the room, pitching your new idea. You'll see a list of questions that actually are the right questions to help you pour your insights in. And then we've got some examples here. Once you answer those and generate, you actually get um, your pitch and then you can transform that. So we know that innovators need to use their content in a shorter version, in a simplified version for your various um, audiences. Um, and so we're really excited about the way that we prompt users. Right. One of the other things that we heard from our users um, was around needing to do the research to be credible with what they're sharing. And so we've actually launched our research hub and our article analyzer within the platform earlier this summer. And so this is all around infusing your ideas with accurate, credible research at your fingertips. So you can use, we have two modes for the article analyzer we're really excited about, <clears throat> that you can actually um, conduct research either by uploading something. So let's say you know the content that you need to dig deep to really understand that concept, maybe a new peer-reviewed publication or great literature. You can also search the literature. So we actually have multiple databases um, integrated in, you can create a literature review. So getting that big, broad picture of what's going on in the space, and then being able to dig deep. So getting those key findings um, and all of those pieces. And then one of the other things that we really believe in <clears throat> is being story infused. And so we actually have what we call our story infuser, um, which if you scan this QR code, you can actually contribute. Um, we're collecting you know, the challenges and ideas that you're facing, so that's what that QR code is for. But this is a way to gather insights and stories at scale. So we actually have different types of stories, whether that's a testimonial or challenge stories, patient stories, that you can actually use our story infuser to send a prompt out to non narratize users to get their feedback and stories to really bring that human element into what you're creating. So as innovators, finding that balance between data, your insights, and the stories that bring empathy and human to them. So that is my presentation. Um, I just wanted to share, we do, someone said we're gonna be at an event next week, um, but you can actually try narratize for free if you want. Uh, there's a QR code um, and then an AI for good coupon if you want to explore some of the new features as well. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. And, and I love for one year, this might be actually the most female speakers we've also had up here, which is always uh, really wonderful. And Summer, if you can come on down. Uh, Summer is the CTA, uh, CEO of ETA, an amazing node in our uh, network. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Um, so we thought I'd give a bit of an update on um, what we just saw at Columbus AI Week. Well, number one, Cincinnati did outperform it. Yeah. I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, so that's okay. We got, we got room to improve on, on Columbus. So we had just under uh, 1,000 folks, had 790 attendees, 140 speakers. Um, as you can see, uh, responses, 183 people responded uh, based on the sessions that were attended. We had a 9.6 reading, I think we had a 9.8 in, in Cincinnati, so a little slight difference, but obviously brand new market. Um, it was really interesting to see, again, uh, I believe in Cincinnati we had 430 uh, different companies that were represented um, at Cincinnati AI Week or Cincy AI Week. Uh, Columbus, it was slightly higher at 460. Uh, but over 30% of the attendees were C-level executives. So really interesting to see organically what's happening in different markets and like what are people responding to. Obviously, you know, from our perspective as going city to city, we're seeing that um, this is obviously top of mind for executives. And now what we're really learning, just like what we're seeing here, is people really want to see these demos. They really want to roll up their sleeves. 
Um, in Columbus, uh, we saw our breakout sessions were definitely the most well attended um, part of the event, which was literally 30 to 45 minutes of where you're just literally rolling up your sleeves and learning how to use a product. So like Paratize, for instance, was there, UFO was there um, doing these breakout sessions, and that's where we got the best feedback. So that's something that as we are adjusting our programming, we'll be continuing to do that. Uh, we do have, uh, since the AI week's really right around the corner, it doesn't feel like it's, it's uh, right around the corner, but it is in June, so we will be starting to kick up our planning um, for the event. Um, most of you who were engaged last year, um, you will be getting an invite. We will be doing an event in December, just as a thank you, a new kind of rally cry, to start really getting all of us together to get amped up for what we'll see in June. We are anticipating a few thousand people at this one, um, just based on what has already previously uh, engaged with us, as well as um, who has, has come to us. So we anticipate a, a, big, a, a much bigger event. Um, for Enterprise Technology Association, we're really a member organization and education platform. Um, my goal is to really take Cincinnati and what we're building here and build bridges to other markets so that we create more opportunity for all of the businesses, all of the folks that are just loving what, what's going on in the AI field and allow us to have a better connection to those other markets. So we have 12 cities coming up, which is insane to think about. Uh, but we've got partners uh, literally from Austin to Boston to Atlanta to Cincy and Columbus, you name it, we've got um, a lot of cities coming up. So you will see a lot of announcements coming up as we um, start to solidify the locations in each of these cities. So we'll, we'll be moving at a fast clip about uh, one every six to eight weeks, which sounds a little, a little crazy, uh, but uh, we're going to do that. So if you want to be involved in any way, shape, or form, reach out uh, Reach out to me. You can find me on LinkedIn, summer at joinETA.org. Um, I'm looking for folks that want to speak, they want to engage in other markets, that you know they want to showcase their startups so we can drive more business because we want to keep you guys here but want you to grow like crazy. Um, we really want to tell your story out in all of these other cities because what we're seeing in Cincinnati is unique. We're not like every other market. Our community is so strong. Um, but we are setting the stage for what other markets should, you know, kind of do and, and engage with. So hopefully, you know, by the end of uh, next year, we'll be able to celebrate your one year anniversary, our anniversary with all these crazy cities and see that we've got, you know, uh, instead of getting, you know, a thousand in each market, you know, we'll have a few thousand in each market and, you know, have 15 to 20,000 folks that are engaged with us that we can all then engage with across the U.S. Uh, when I say we have an amazing ecosystem, we have an amazing, amazing ecosystem. And each and every single one of you is a part of it. So thank you for being here. Um, and again, thank you for all of our sponsors. Um, I, Kendra and I sometimes forget to do our introductions. <laughs> and Sabrina was uh, helping, so we didn't do introductions. Uh, but for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Helen Todd, and I have a podcast called Creativity Squared that explores the intersection of AI and creativity. And I only bring this up, uh, well, one, you should subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, but two, I had a guest on my show, uh, Sam Jordan. She's from the Future Today Institute. And she has a quote that really stuck with me and kind of has turned into my rallying cry, but it makes me think of this community so much. She said, the pessimistic scenario happens when you maintain the status quo. As technology advances and as the behaviors change, you will get a pessimistic scenario 10 times out of 10 if you change nothing. Optimism. Optimism is harder because optimism requires you to do something, to take action. And every single one of us that are taking action to co-create the future that we want with responsible AI that's human-centered. And I want us all to celebrate that in the room today. And we have a very special guest. Uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that we kind of uh, get credit for leading some of the uh, AI grassroots movement, and we are so honored to have Mayor Aftab join us today uh, to show his support. Give it up for Helen Tom, everybody. Keep it going. I am so excited to be here with Cincy AI. Uh, are you guys playing bingo? Yeah. Okay, well. Follow along. I am so excited to be here uh, with Cincy AI to celebrate one year. Congratulations, everybody. One year of this group for meeting. One of the, the first in, in the state to, uh, to organize our community around the transformational opportunities 
presented by new technologies and specifically artificial intelligence. Thank you so much to, to Helen. Look, the, the, the city uh, takes this very seriously. In fact, uh, we are proud um, that our water systems already rely on machine learning right now in order to improve our processes, in order to filter out really challenging um, uh, pollutants in order to help us in the fight against PFOS, for example, uh, a new new variations of forever chemicals that continue to challenge our water supply. But, but we are so excited about the future potential of responsible AI, which is why we were one of the, the big supporters of MidwestCon and, and everything Rob Richardson is doing in the space. You know, when, when, when we talk about the future of AI, you know, there are so many things that are important underneath the umbrella of responsible AI. You know, obviously the city is very concerned about AI regulation, uh, what the federal government is going to do, what the state government is going to do. Because of federalism, it's going to be challenging for cities to be first actors with respect to regulation. But obviously that framework is really important to us so that we are, um, we have the confidence to move into the space decisively. Uh, obviously we're always concerned about uh, implicit bias or uh, disenfranchisement or uh, racism that might be reflected in our technologies that exist in, in the real world uh, here today. So in any of those challenges, those racial equity challenges is going to be uh, going to be top of mind. But, but the opportunity of AI is really um, kind of mind blowing. It, it's, it's, it's more than just, you know, natural language models and, and, and large language models. Uh, to make sure that we're using the best chat service possible for our website or connecting our website to different APIs in order to make sure that our services are more efficient and more comprehensive. All of those things are exciting. But what is truly transformational about AI is the, 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 the rate of adoption, particularly for young people, where AI is now just part of the workflow tools that they have at their disposal in order to navigate the world. That, that quick adoption by younger generations, I think is pretty compelling evidence that this is not a fad or a flash in the pan, this is a new way of life. And cities that are on the front foot, that are learning from the private sector about how to leverage these technologies more effectively for our citizens, uh, the, 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 the movers that are responsible but are relatively quick those folks are really going to have an opportunity not just to benefit from these advances and innovations, but truly to lead it, to dictate it, to reflect what we think AI should be in the international conversation. And the fact that the University of Cincinnati, which has put such a priority on data science, is part of the infrastructure and stakeholders that are leading this charge. How has no one said bingo? <laughs> I'm just like crushing this meetup up part. Just crushing it. Um, I even got APIs in there. WTF. Uh, I'll just say this. Um, I'm really proud of the fact that Helen and her team and Rob and Pete Blackshaw and so many of the, the large corporate CTOs are personally and professionally investing in this space because that gives our city the leg up to have access to this subject matter expertise and make sure that the citizens are benefiting in the most equitable way possible. So for this first year, for the many years to come, thank you so much. The city is really excited to partner with this entire community. Congratulations. <laughs> We normally, okay, so Chuck, uh, we got one bingo. 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 Oh, we got two. Uh, okay. And, and uh, Kendra is you know, co founder, co host, and integral to all of this, too. Okay, so normally uh, we would go to QA um, and open it up and share, uh, but uh, we, since we have a very special guest there, Aftab, and we only have them for a little bit longer, we're going to mix things up today. And I think what we're going to do instead of Q and A, we're just going to have a lot more time for networking uh, since we have like that five o'clock hard uh, stop. So once I finish talking, which uh, we're going to 
go all to the wall. The mayor is going to be right in front of the table, and we have another surprise uh, for our photo op. And then after that, uh, we'll be networking. Um, and as Kendra mentioned, and we'll figure out how to give away these books um, too. Uh, but as Kendra mentioned, uh, we do have a very hard stop at 4:50 and 5 o'clock uh, for another uh, group that needs the room. So we want to respect that. So we'll have more time for networking because we're doing uh, the group photo. So um, again, thank you to the University of Cincinnati and our sponsors who make this possible. And I think one thing I didn't say earlier, um, uh, we've said before like we're the largest AI meetup in Cincinnati, uh, but having gone to Columbus and uh, Cleveland and people come in from Indiana and Kentucky, uh, further away than Kentucky than across the river, uh, we are actually the largest AI meetup and community in the entire state of Ohio and in the tri-state region. So, you can connect with us um, and again like I said there's so much going on this week between the startup week and everything else going on and time is one of our most valuable resources so thank you for spending some time with us to celebrate our one year anniversary thank you for being here and with that we're going to do our photo <laughs>